Hey there everyone, I'm Lin Lin, and welcome back to the Shark Pit of General Commentary. If you are familiar with the content I make, you are more than likely familiar with a commentator called Harley BTS. Yeah, 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 this meme is very dead, we need a new one. If you are familiar with the content I make, you are more than likely familiar with a commentator called Harley TB Sus. A gameplay slash general commentator who has been able to mostly have a pretty smooth career in terms of controversy surrounding themselves as of late. And the reason why I say mostly there is because relatively recently there has been a video about Harley's behaviour that performed pretty well. Meet Vincent Skullman, a small commentator who has been previously producing content for most of 2022 and has been seeing impressive success given the size of the channel. He even produced a pretty fun video speculating around the lore surrounding my OC, in a video that I am bringing up for no particular reason other than wanting more midroll ads. Speaking of midroll ads, subscribe to the channel everyone! I have some pretty high goals for this year and if you want to support my ability to make these insufferably average videos, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications. It really does help me more than you could know. And with all that said, let's get into the meat of this video. The video I'm going to be going over is called Harley TBS Issues Under the Surface, a video that flew to the top of Vincent's videos in terms of viewership in a full-on stonks moment, and I must say that I'm not exactly happy about that due to some of the arguments that Vincent uses. First of all, Vincent uses the frequency of Harley's videos that relate to cases surrounding predators. Starting with Harley's content would probably work best as to give an overview with what I'm dealing with and more so why it has become a staple of the channel, this being their exposure of groomer, or predator videos which often pin down a certain individual and go over the many deeds done by that person, which seems to be plentiful when you look back at their channel. To make a point, I'll name all the people they have addressed in such videos and you can tell me if they are dependent on the genre or not. First off, we have Dr. Apis, Pyrocynical, Call Me Carson, Len Totally, Cosmodore, James Charles, EDP445, Themself, The Vanos Crew, Kodomo Dachi, Birdie, Blog the Great Rouge, Zero Phoenix, Dangan Mandy, Chijo, Entity Maze, Shannon Sunday, Rose Scripts, Vexe Stuff, Lion Maker, Twitter, Sir JC, Kologish, Arcadum, Jikishi, Bad Boy Halo, they were false allegations, Shadman, YouTube's advertisements, Mama Max, Hypnotist Sappho, Average MC YT, Kenya Suzuki, Fire Sale, Antunes, Mirth, Foxy Boxy, again false, and finally Camilla Cuevas. Fucking hell. This is without including follow-ups to the situations in question, which pretty much holds their channel up, and ultimately there isn't much to add on alongside this when you take all these videos away. Besides, what, r slash who cares? Now, I can kind of see where you're coming from on this, but that's not to say that you didn't fumble this one a bit when you said that there would be barely any content to fall back on if you removed these cases from Harley's channel. When I first watched this video, I did see it as a little bit sus for you to show these videos individually instead of showing them relative to the rest of Harley's channel, so I decided to test this out. I made a table on Google Docs to place the cases that Harley covered into to see if the total cases Harley covers surrounding predators is as disproportionate as you make it out to be. And with that said, over to the maths corner. Welcome to the Linlin Maths Corner, where we are going to be running the numbers. So as you can see here, I've made a Google Doc with a table that equates all of the content topics that Harley has talked about. And in, so obviously in this column, we have all of the video topics that Vincent listed there. And in this column, we have everything else. On its own there, you can already see that that's a little disproportionate, but we will get into the hard numbers in a second. Now, even if we ignore the fact that Vincent actually missed a video topic that Harley covered that did involve predator allegations against Skeppy, it still wouldn't really help their case here all too much, because if we highlight all of these, we can now use Google Docs to figure out how many rows this is, which is 37. So, that is 37 cases that Vincent lists of cases that Harley discussed that had predator allegations involved in them. Whereas, if we round up everything else in this column here, 
That's 96. Still not convinced? How about we talk about this from a percentage standpoint? So first of all, we're going to need to figure out our 100% here. So we're going to ignore my awful handwriting here and go 96 plus 37 equals 133. Now that's our 100%, so 133 equals 100%. Next, we need to figure out what 1% of that is, which leaves us with 1.33, because you divide this side by what you divided this side by, which is 100 here. And then we multiply up from this to get to 37, to match up the 37 topics that Vincent talked about there. And what did we need to times 1.33 by in order to get 37? Well, that would be 27. 819. And with that said, back to the general commentary cringe. My point here is that you absolutely can have the view that Harley talks about situations involving predators too much. But to say that they do so to such an extent that they cover almost nothing else, as you imply when you say that there isn't much left when you take these topics away, is a bit of a stretch to say the least. At the end of the day, the take you are giving is ultimately subjective, so I can say that I am open to agree to disagree with the sentiment here. However, while you can have that opinion if you want, what you shouldn't do is hyperbolize things to make the facts of the case look different to how they really are to make your point look stronger. And not only do you do this, but you also go on to assume Harley's intent on doing that. You're probably thinking, well, surely this isn't exactly a bad thing, right? Expose a predator and get them gone. Though, to some extent, I see your side, but you have to understand a couple factors alongside your opinion. Usually, when you have a channel more or less dedicated to exposing terrible behaviour like this, you have someone serious presenting it all in a manner where they are facing the camera and breaking it down. Mama Max or Mike Fox do this rather well with real predators or digital ones. But with Harley, we have someone inexperienced and speaking of a gameplay with them hitting a fat clip. Like, I expect to hear about someone getting called cringe or something and the atmosphere is completely off to the point you'd wonder if maybe they should take some time to split apart their content to a more serious setup where they address the camera directly to give a better idea of what's happening. Though you should have probably strayed from this kind of content to begin with considering you are barely an adult to begin with so getting wrapped up with predators is the last thing you should have been doing at 16. I'm not saying you would have been groomed yourself but the fact you're dealing with numerous adults with large followings could have beaten you down far harder than you could recover from. Your persistence may just be ill-placed I suppose but nevertheless you continue to keep making these videos. Whatever, you clearly saw your opportunity to capitalise on something that would garner many eyes and kept posting, similar to what you did during the Hopeless Peaches drama as you constantly went after the offending parties, instead of making a larger video to gather all the information into one long timeline, you just spam posted. That's why there's so many videos on Kai Wise, Prison May Luke and Creepshow Art which didn't need to be uploaded in the first place, no doubt, as a wider gap in time would have allowed for a more concise video like what Mally Malware did. Failing that, you could at least make slightly longer videos at a less consistent rate, but it didn't seem to matter because as soon as that fell out of fashion, you went back to pedo hunting instead. You probably saw yourself as some sort of hero shooting down all these foul creatures, which is why you consistently uploaded videos to this day about it. Sure, you did the maths and put the wrong people down, but that didn't stop you from benefiting of situations like the Hyundai Dev one, the Gacha Life one, the Peaches one, and the concurrent one of going after predators. All the while not giving a shit about how you come across to the audience as you voice over gameplay that is mundane enough to break the atmosphere you should be building. I understand if there's some personal vendetta considering you got groomed, but the fact you hard target so many but don't even put in the effort to look like you care is sickening. While this really should go without saying, this is really bothersome with the levels of self-righteousness you try to prescribe to Harley based on genuinely nothing concrete. It's just straight up villainizing who you're talking about by making a leap in logic instead of an actual argument. You present the statements that Harley is making content that relates to predators because they see themselves as a hero, because they saw an opportunity to grow their viewership, or because you suspect, again not prove, that they may have a personal vendetta because they were a victim of such an act, based on nothing but the fact that they talk about cases involving predators a lot. 
And even if we ignore how it is not as much of a staple to Harley's content as you seem to make it out to be, you are also going to need to elaborate on how posting about predators a lot is actual evidence of the person you claim Harley is. To tell you the truth, I just don't see it. TLDR, don't make presumptions about people's character when you have ultimately nothing that actually does substantiate those notions that doesn't also open the potential for an interpretation that is a lot less uncharitable and just as likely. Something else that I found to be quite distasteful on your end would be this. I think it is time to zoom in on a couple of these videos though, where they proudly parade themselves around in the thumbnail whilst throwing out all these buzzwords to drag in people who may wonder how they messed up or who leveraged such allegations against them. This array of videos often tend to be more mundane than what they actually are, as such as with this my response video which is just you answering questions. Real nice, going with manipulating the common consensus there to trick people into clicking on your video, thinking something happened. This is even worse when the second one is so boring, but the first one is you breaking down a YouTuber for posting fake predator allegations, which isn't something that you should be getting mixed up. But, oh, you gotta be keeping things mysterious instead of making a more proper title. You could have put why small commentary channels shouldn't cover heavy accusations, but then you would look like a massive hypocrite. Good thing you didn't say that then. Commentators are notoriously bad at covering predator allegations, not just because there's so many small commentators that it's more obvious that more are gonna make mistakes, but also because they haven't established themselves as creators and are less trustworthy. Also because normally when you're a smaller commentator you're either quite young, or because you haven't grown your channel yet because you're new to content creation. Oh wait, you did. You should be waging war on people who are misusing the audience they have gained, but to say every small channel shouldn't receive that kind of audience is just you telling certain creators that what they can and can't do on the platform anymore. I have many problems with this. First of all, you say that Harley shouldn't be getting mixed up in false predator allegations, despite the fact that in the video that you were referring to, you seem to miss the fact that one of those predator allegations was made towards themselves. Small commentators are notoriously bad at covering predator to allegations, not just because there's so many small commentators that it's more obvious that more are going to make mistakes, but also because they haven't established themselves as creators and are less trustworthy, also because normally when you're a smaller commentator you're either quite young, or because you haven't grown your channel yet because you're new to content creation. Which is why we have so many situations where smaller commentators mess up very serious allegations and end up leaving themselves in situations where they get blasted by most of the community and they never gain back any of the credibility they lost. Today I'm going to be discussing a small commentator that is incredibly notorious for doing so and have made two videos making false allegations against two different people and today I'm going to be looking at the Kaneko Kitten allegations and their allegations against me both of which they admit were basically clickbait. So I struggle to see how getting involved in false predator allegations is really their fault here when one of the allegations was made towards them. Like, what did you expect Harley to do exactly? Just sit there and let that narrative go unchallenged? Not to mention how you also try to call Harley a hypocrite for saying that small commentary channels shouldn't handle serious allegations, despite the fact that in the clip that you showed to back that up, that isn't even what they said. They instead used the statement that small commentators frequently mess up serious situations as a hook of sorts to introduce the topic of discussion in the video. I'm sorry, but at this point you're either including clips that you haven't actually watched or you're blatantly lying, neither of which are that great. Same can be said with your predator allegations video where you grilled someone for using your face and promoting face allegations for views, but what did you do? What did you fucking do? You did the exact same thing because when you do it, you're fine with manipulating your image to bring in those who may have seen the video you're talking about. Just raking in those views. Who cares if you're pushing a false narrative when you can have all these new subs. Yeah, I really don't get this one. How is Harley a hypocrite for promoting false allegations for views, when not only do you not give an example of them doing that themselves, but the video you're referencing is one that was made to go against false allegations. Smaller commentators are notoriously bad at covering serious allegations. I don't think a better example comes to my mind than when a commentator I covered recently, prior to this video, released a video where they falsely called me a predator for views and clickbait. They had no grounds, no research, no evidence. It was simply for views and clickbait. They tried to play it off as a joke in the video, but I believe that morally it is wrong to make a thumbnail and title where you clickbait a predator allegation and falsely claim someone to be such a thing. And the way they covered that situation was a perfect example of what I'm referring to with small commentators covering the situations. And today's video actually covers the exact same person. Because they've made multiple defenses for themselves in which they try and claim 
that what they said about me was a joke, that it wasn't serious, that it wasn't supposed to be taken serious, and that I flew off the handle at a sarcastic joke that I shouldn't have responded to in the way I did. I obviously disagree, I think it's out of the question whether you should be allowed to clickbait serious allegations about someone, but listen, even giving them the most benefit of the doubt, fine, let's just say that what they said was completely jokes, that they had no bad meaning and that there was nothing wrong with what they did. What if I was to tell you that there was evidence that they actually completely fabricated, manipulated and misled everyone on a real predator allegation? It really frustrates me that this needs to be said apparently, but in order to call someone a hypocrite, you need to actually point to them doing something that they have claimed to be a problem. And yet, you only do half the job here and reference something where they claim that promoting false allegations is a problem. That on its own isn't really grounds to call Harley a hypocrite because you haven't shown anything that suggests that Harley does that too. And in terms of clickbaiting, I don't really know what to tell you here. Just watch the video, mate. The video did relate to predator allegations, so the title was not misleading. And if you were instead referring to the thumbnail, then I struggle to see why that is clickbait either, given how it doesn't misrepresent the video that you're about to click on at all. Brief editor's note to elaborate on this point a little bit. The reason why it may seem like I'm going off on a bit of a tangent here is because one of the problems that I have with Vincent's point here is that it's kind of hard to tell at points what they're trying to call Harley a hypocrite for exactly, so I thought it was prudent to go over each of the different possibilities of what I feel like he could be referencing here, especially given how I don't particularly think he's in the right for any of them. Next is your coverage of Harley wanting to get their channel verified a while ago. Moving away from the content though, we will find a certain screenshot floating around of you begging for something else besides views, and what would that be? Verification. You see, instead of informing your audience to be wary of bot accounts in your comments or making sure they double check who they are actually watching, you were knocking for that early verification, which is baffling. You certainly aren't the first to be impersonated, but even then, you have a marginalised difference between yourself and any bot that could try to compete, because even at the time you had 40k subs, so it becomes natural selection on your fan side of things by that point. Even if you were to become verified early, it isn't like the bots are going to stop since you have people people like Jacksepticeye or Game Theory complain about the comments being all kinds of messed up as well, so realistically, it would have done you no good to begin with. It should fall to YouTube to fix the issues, but despite it being their platform, we know how unreliable they are, so you need to step up and do the heavy lifting to keep your fans safe. But I suppose you're never going to complain about this again now that you've got this little check mark. We can really see how pointless your tantrum was if you still think the issue persists up until the current times now. Why is Harley asking YouTube for verification a problem exactly? It's excessively petty that you would try to hold this against Harley because it makes you look like you're really, really scraping the bottom of the barrel here to try to find something to have an issue with when you're deferring to something this old and seemingly insignificant. Next up is your coverage of Harley's feud with Sen. But overall, I think your worst attempt at calling in people's attention is when you just start lying about things to make them far bigger than what they should have been. Offhand comments that have no reason to be taken seriously. Taking a look back at your quarrel with Mr. Zen is definitely a place where things get blown out of proportion because you wanted to twist things to look better on your end, despite what they actually appear as. I'm more so pointing to the fact you called out Sen for being transphobic when he said pick an identity, which came down to the fact you kept flipping between different profile pictures and names. As someone who often has to do a double take to make sure it actually is you, I can agree that you've changed your profile up repeatedly, and to someone you're trying to interact with, it can come off as annoying since you're looking for one name that might just vanish, only to realise you've been ignoring them un unintentionally. It was a poke at how you kept changing your profile, but you just saw an opportunity to play victim and try to pin Sen as something he is not, since it isn't like he has shown such behaviour before. So you show a tweet of Sen telling Harley to figure out what identity they are today, without showing anything that actually substantiates your claim that Sen was just referring to Harley changing profile pictures a lot. Could you please substantiate something that you're saying for once? Not only that, but how about we actually take a look at the full picture surrounding this feud and look at Harley's videos about it? I wonder what we'll find. I'd also like to take this moment here to mention the fact that at multiple times during this video, Sen intentionally misgenders me and calls me he when he knows my pronouns, which is incredibly disrespectful on its own, but obviously he's a trans so it should be expected, and when people corrected my pronouns to him, he re-corrected them with the wrong pronouns. That is the most 
fucking transphobic thing. And the fact I see people from his audience in my comments like, no, Sen isn't transphobic. He just said that you didn't know your identity, which again would be transphobic. But he's also actively misgendering me. He is a transphobe. There isn't a way to hide behind this. There isn't an excuse for this. He corrects people my pronouns. The problem that I have with this is that you just downplayed Sen's transphobia by not giving the full extent of the context surrounding his actions. To the point that this honestly feels cherry-picked at best, given how Harley had said in the past when addressing Sen's tweet that it was the least severe of Sen's actions that Harley was criticising. But I digress, let's get right into the actual topic of this video. I'd like to start this video by going from minimal severity to maximum severity. So, I'm gonna start with the topic that's genuinely quite close to me, and hurts me in quite, quite a few ways, but when I called out Sen on some of his racist comments that he made publicly on Twitter, Sen quote tweeted me, saying, Stop lying and go figure out what identity you are today. Now, this is a clearly transphobic comment and is intended to target me as a minority in a way to mock me. So there are two possibilities here. Either you didn't look into the case you discuss enough, or you are just cherry picking information to suit your narrative and downplaying the actions of a transphobe. Don't we just love how you conveniently neglect the other transphobic behaviour from Sen that Harley had called out, while also actively saying that Sen didn't do anything wrong when he very clearly did? You either Cherry picked something that Harley admits was the least impactful example of Sen's behaviour, or you rushed into covering the topic with a poor recollection of its events. And not only are neither of those any good, but even going with the more charitable one, it still doesn't excuse you making claims about why Sen said what he said without nothing to back it up. And to avoid me continuing to repeat myself, the final claim that Vincent made in his video that I want to respond to would be this one. I'm gonna play a couple clips from their video to combat against, so it should be easier to follow along to. Obviously, that drama was not easy for me, because I was a small YouTuber at the time. It was the first time I'd experienced a drama on that scale, and it was coming off of the pyrocynical allegations. I was dumped with another video that had hundreds of thousands of views, and then two follow-ups which also had hundreds of thousands of views, claiming things about me that weren't true, which led to physical shaking, panic attacks, and a whole bunch more, which you don't realise can actually happen until after it happens. If you're a small YouTuber and you aren't prepared to deal with drama on YouTube, you will end up in a situation where that drama affects you a lot more than you'd think when someone either wrongfully or rightfully alleges that you've done something in the sphere or calls you out based under false or accurate pretenses. When it comes down to dealing with a bigger YouTuber than yourself, you should study their pattern for when addressing controversy or what their fan base is typically like, because then it grants at least some foresight into what is coming. Due to Harley not being properly clued in to how rabid Luke's fans were, it easily broke through their expectations and left them struggling to properly handle such an aftermath when it rose to popularity and got the response it did. Had you got the video ready, covered your bases as to how he may attack you, and then uploaded it, it could have potentially saved you plenty of hardship that otherwise should have been picked up on sooner considering his prior video spam on Toby or Hopeless Peaches. I've expressed how daunting this experience can be for me considering the massive gap in subs, but even still I have hunkered down for whatever may come back from Harley which is either a written response on Twitter or a video response on YouTube itself. At best this feels like fear mongering, but had Harley stepped back to better educate themselves on what could have followed then such issues wouldn't have come. I get you should let people know the effects of such stress, but preemptively preparing for a bombardment is the key to surviving a drama, since it gives you the leg up to beat people dragging you down. I'm not saying you should become a sidekick, but having a general idea is key. You take a clip from Harley's video where they talk about how their situation with prison mate Luke had led to panic attacks, and respond to it by talking about how Harley should have prepared better. Yeah, how about we don't respond to things Harley said with factoids that are completely irrelevant to the topic of the conversation at best, or just outright victim blaming at worst. With all that said though, I think it's time to wrap this up. To conclude, I really struggle to understand why this video was even listened to. Points of pretty obvious bias were consistently visible given how you would make leaps in logic to make really bad faith claims that the most basis you have for was over exaggerated if we accept the notion that they actually proved the argument you were trying to make even though they really didn't. And you would also move on to fall on your face as you try to make calls to hypocrisy multiple times by making statements that you would know to be untrue by either doing the slightest bit of 
due diligence at best, or by watching the clip you used at worst. All of this ultimately came together to make a video that had a heavy case of prison mate Luke syndrome, where you are either too incompetent to watch the very clips that you are showing, or you actively ignored that a lot of your claims have no backing for them. And even if we do give you the charitable interpretation here, it still doesn't make up for the massive problems that your video had. Granted, I do think that you can bounce back from this. You have been overall pretty sensible in your content before this one, and I'm sure that you can make sure that you don't do this kind of thing again. That being said, it did make this video immensely frustrating. Harley is someone who is deserving of criticism in places as almost everyone is. But even so, this video was a mess due to how much you fumbled here in spite of that. With all that said though, I've been Linlin, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care everyone.